All right, guys, welcome back. We're here today with Sam Chumley, one of my old friends that I went to junior high school together, I guess, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Um, you're going to hear his hounds in the background. Just ignore them. But Sam's got a 65 Plymouth that we wanted to show you guys. It's a Plymouth satellite. And what do you want us to tell us about it, Sam? Well, I love it. <laughs> it uh, I got some nice documentation on it. It is the original color, not the original paint. It's had a one repaint in its life. The interior is all original. Everything in there is untouched. Untouched, you know. Well, and I, you bought this car in Detroit, didn't you? I bought it in a Detroit suburb from one of them wheelie dealy dealers, <laughs> which usually you get, you know, the internet jacking. Yeah. But I was yeah. pleasantly surprised when it come off the trailer here at the house because it was in. So you just bought it sight unseen? Well, I seen it on pictures, pictures, <laughs> pictures of it, you know, which I don't know if I'd have I had, like that. I had a roadrunner, right? The blue one. Yeah. Blue what year was that? 69. 383 four speed air grab roadrunner, but it was almost time. I was messed. I changed the shifter out in it and I was changing the gas pedal. Gas pedal was worn in the original, changed the gas pedal, and I nearly poked my finger through the floorboard. Oh, now was it a rust bucket? By no means, but it was going to need soon. Yeah. Floorboard, front floorboards, mm -hmm. and a trunk center. This trunk car place. don't need none of that. This car don't this, need none of that. It's, it's solid. Nice. Yeah, I've seen it. And uh, anyway, I sold it. So here I am, too. I'm sitting around, no hot rod. I've always had a hot rod my entire life. Yeah. I've never went more than a year or two. And now Sam's more. always, he's been a Mopar guy, like. Yeah, since. I've always been a Ford guy. Since 17. Yeah. Yes. But now your parents did have a, a, at least uh, one I, town I, car, my, didn't they? Hey, oh, dad was a Ford guy. Was he? Uh, the, how many Lincoln's numerous, did they have? Two, two Lincoln town cars, 75 and a 77. Uh, LTDs, two yeah, LTDs. Yeah, 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 I remember those. Uh, two F one fifties. You know, seventy, seventy one, and a seventy. I believe it was seventy eight F one fifty. You know. So anyway, Sam got turned yeah. onto the Mopar somewhere. Yeah. Well, the car they were driving when I first went to school was a sixty nine Plymouth GTS. Yeah, that's right. B five blue, beautiful car. Yeah. That's what I went to school my first day of kindergarten. So. Yeah. Anyway, I got hooked on the Mopars because Dad said it would outrun anything he ever had. So, <laughs> there you go. I always wanted one of those. Never had a GTX. Yeah. I had a GTX, but it was a project car that never did run. So, it went down. <laughs> I traded it for a transmission in the 80s. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, so, uh, this thing was born with a 361, correct? Yeah, 361, big block, smallest big block, Mopar Max, automatic on the floor, which it, nearly all satellites come with a console of buckets whether it be four speed or automatic, but you could get anything from a slant six to a 426 Hemi. Yeah. Yeah. You know. This was born Hemi a 361 a car. The 361 car is long gone. It's got a mild 440 in it now. <clears throat> I nostalgia super stock race it <clears throat> because of car shows. I enjoy car shows. And you bought, really you bought it with the 440 in it, didn't yes. you? Yes. Yeah. Sure did. And, and it's the original transmission. And the original 361, and that's <laughs> going to change this spring. I got it. I got a guy in Indiana building me a, a good transmission. So, and you actually do take this to the drag strip, don't oh, you? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's what I. That's what I want to do. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. Back in the eighties, when we was in high school, you could roll around town and get a race every now and then. And I got mm -hmm. the race thing, and street racing is yeah. really not the way to go. It's dangerous, right? And so, therefore, I enjoy being around those people that I race with. They're really a bunch of good guys and I enjoy all types of cars, Fords. Mm -hmm. We got one guy that's got a 409 Chevy that is just an awesome car. Yeah. Yeah. Oldsmobiles, you name it. I enjoy them all. Yeah. But I prefer a Mopar. Right. But I, I cast it off as a 426 wedge, not to be confused <laughs> with a max wedge. In 65, 64 and 65, they had available a 426 street wedge, which is essentially a small bore 440. Or a big bore 413 with a single four barrel. 365 horsepower factory rate, where 440 was rated at 375. So. Hmm. Well, let's get the camera off there and walk around it and okay. check it out. All right. It, it come with that on it. And like I said, I cast it off. They were available with a 426 Street Wedge or a Hemi. But, but I, it's a 440. It's a 440. But 
those are pretty high dollar the original one like that, that come on there or you put it on there uh no it was on there when i bought was it, it you, whatever class engine it had whether it was 318 273 yeah 383 like art 364 yeah like art 64 yeah, has it would have it in it on there, yeah whatever it was you know yeah so there you go so i cast it off and floor. if you see this front license plate sam yeah. is a steamboat captain how many years you've been doing that well not a steamboat diesel towboat but diesel uh, towboat, 37 what the years hell's <laughs> 30, 37 years 37 years yeah right out of high school i guess yes i worked at grain elevator a little while and seen the boats going by and thought that's the life for me of course yeah 37 you years know, you know the deal so now all the grill and everything on the car looks all original yes it is and you, you can find it it's not perfect it's a it's what me and you would call a street strip car which it's is nice really bad nowadays but it uh, has had a repaint on it mm -hmm. in the original color yep and the top was originally that color too yes it? That's the it was a two-tone two -tone car matches the interior with the interior like that I don't know when you want to poke your head in there or whatever. Yeah, we will. It uh, it's package tray, tail light lenses. You can see a few cracks in them and stuff, but it's uh, yeah. I believe all that stuff to be original. Yeah, it's a uh, headliner. It appears to be original. Other than like I say, a repaint. Even the the gaskets appear to be original because they got a little cracking on them. Which yeah, maybe someday I'll get to that. We'll see. There's you know. no point really. But most it's everything. It's only original once. Works, blinkers, horn, lights. Well, the backup lights you know. come on when you yep. backed out. Yep. And it's, uh, like I said, it's by no means a perfect car. We waited around all day for the sun to come out. Now we're getting shadows, but, but it's, it's a, a lot nicer than it was. It's got a pretty good cool factor to it to me. Oh, it yeah. does. It looks great. In my opinion. Of course, I'm jimmy it up a little bit, but with this drag racing, I'm not going to go so far. I think it's 750. I'm not going to go that fast. I'm going to stop short of that. I yeah. want to go a little faster than what it's going now. Yeah. Not much, just mm -hmm. four or five tenths. And that'll be fast enough because I don't want to cut it up, put a roll bar in it. And all oh, yeah. Stuff. I don't blame you. The way it is now, I can get nine inch slicks under it. Everything's cool. Was you 65 know. the first year for the satellite? No. Maybe. Because I can't think of a 64. Yeah, it, it was just a Belvedere before that. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, 65 was the first year for a satellite. And like I said, with a Belvedere, to get bucket seats in a console, you'd have to order that. Right, and it comes standard. Every satellite I've seen has it. And whether it be four-speed or automatic. Clearly know. the original door panels, because nobody's making those. No. <laughs> no, they do make seat covers and headliners. but Do they? I, yeah, I can't get a dash pad for it. Kick panels are really hard to find. Well, you don't really need a dash and, pad, do you? Uh, no, I need a console lid pad. Oh, and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's cracked a little bit there. Yeah, but that's like I said, it's fifty-eight years old. So right. There you have it. No, and, uh, it's not not too shabby for steering wheels. Years. Not cracked. No. Nope. What's out there in the console? Oil pressure? All right, that's oil pressure gauge, yes. Originally attack. There was originally attack there. Originally, which I have in a box. You still have it. In the garage, yeah. Yeah. But I wanted my oil pressure gauge down there because, you know, a hot rod, you got to have an oil yeah, you pressure gauge. Have it, so yeah. I moved my tack up there where it's right at my eyes instead of having to look down. Right, yeah. Track. You know, my 68's got that down there in the console. A lot of people right. complain about it or did back then. Well, a lot of people shift by ear, but uh, mm -hmm. I like to see the tack and see what's going on. Yeah. You know? And oil pressure is very important to me, especially on a big block car. You know? Yeah. Let's show them that engine. Show them that. You just did something with the alternator. You I just upgraded. done away. And I would recommend this modification. I've been in Mopar since I bought my first one in 1987. I would recommend this modification to anybody that has a Mopar. All right. Let's show it to them. All right. <laughs> no more. And we all know the ballast resistor game, yeah. points, electronic distributors, voltage regulators, dim headlights. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a 67 air cleaner, by the way. A 65 would be would not have the snorkels on it, except a 361 might have a single one. But a 426 wedge would have none, and it would be chrome. Yeah. But, uh, manual brakes, it does have power steering, which I'm not a big fan of, but... It's got it. I wow. do have a line lock on it. It's a new wiring. But what I've done, that's original radiator and metal shroud. 
very yep. hard to come by. Yep. What I done was put a Denso Japanese alternator on it. Then you, you said it was Toyota, didn't you? Toyota, yeah, for yeah. a eighty-five Toyota truck, something like really? that. And it comes with a single pulley. You buy a little wire and pigtail. I put a new wire and harness on, as you can see. Yeah, those are nice and bright. See, there's an original wire uh -huh. underneath for the headlights. But done away with all this ballast resistor, and anybody that's on a Mopar knows that the voltage regulator and the ballast resistor cause you idle down, the lights get dim, your battery won't charge, you're weak, yeah. 30 amp all there. So it made a huge difference. <laughs> made a huge difference. And uh, yeah, and you get a hotter fire that way too, you know, I mean. Right. Yeah, and that, that does sense. away with, and these uh, ballast resistors, most Mopar guys, you know, they go, they bolt right here. Yep. And most Mopar They used them guys, clear up into the 70s, didn't they? They used them all the way to 80, or maybe whenever they switch from carburetor to fuel injection is when they done away with it. Wow. But they'll burn out underneath, and most Mopar guys will carry an extra one around in the glove box because mm -hmm. down she goes. Yeah. And there you sit along the road. Right. And the voltage regulator thing was the, you know, headlights mm -hmm. going down. You know, they just stay steady now. And they, well, whoever did it did a hell of a job on this car. Yeah. Well, a guy by the name of Dan Cook, who's a pretty well-known engine builder in ohio actually yeah. built the car yeah actually but he actually his specialty is uh 500 strokers but this is not that it's just a 30 over 440 with a hydraulic cam it's nothing special yeah and then on this side of course we got the same thing those original pedals carpet everything's yep original heel pad everything's there Satellite on the door panels. Yep. And there's your tack that you can read. Yeah, right. <laughs> that is correct. That's all this thing needs is that console pad. Yeah. You could send that out there to Just Dashes in California and have that restored. There, there is a place in California, yes, that I can mm -hmm. get that taken care of. That'd be a good thing that to send fun. off this winter when you're not using it. Yeah. 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 They, they're, they're, they got a backlog, they'll though. They'll cost you. And yeah, it's a backlog. Yeah, but I think it would be worth it because that's all I really. Every time I'm afraid, you know, you get in there and you want to lean on it. Oh yeah, you hear a crackle and carry on. Yeah, you just got to train yourself like a Lincoln right. Town Car door panel. And I've had some luck your... racing here with it. I got the <laughs> class winner at Coles County Dragway one day. I got lucky. I, you know, like I said, I, I got a transmission coming, <laughs> but I'm not really a transmission guy. But I'm having a good solid transmission that'll shift no, you, you know, need this air shifts like a lincoln town car pretty much right right which kills what we yeah. got going on well let's close it up and look at some of that original document uh documentation okay let me get that for you first this, sam wants this, to show us everything he this, took off there to this upgrade. little jewel here that's bad news they're just bad <laughs> the ballast news. resistor yeah and yeah. what you get when you crank it you have two wires hooked up to each side and what you get when you turn the ignition key on you get 12 cranking volts, and then when that ignition key comes back to run, you're only getting nine volts yeah. to the rest of your car. Yeah, not good. Not good, especially if you want performance. And, and the, these things, these old mechanical. And that's the old voltage regulator. Old mechanical voltage regulators, you know, they're, and as soon as you idle down, your headlights go numb. And I, mm -hmm. I would recommend that modification so to anybody. Anybody with one of these old Mopars. Yes. That, you really took a lot of stuff off. It looks a lot cleaner under there now. Oh, yeah, and it's just, like I said, this old Brill, it's 58 years old. Right. And everybody's always dogging Mopar electronics and stuff, but this shit's it's holding a long time. time. You know, yeah. just fix it. you have any miles is, says it's got on the car? <sighs> you know, I haven't looked at the old well, dome. It, it's an excess with 100,000. We'll have to take a look sure. at it when we take a ride. But Of course, that's a... Starter cable that had to go. Oh, you replaced really, all that too. Yeah, huh? I replaced that too because you know you don't want to let down at the drag strip. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I'd recommend that to anybody with seventy shit. I'd say nineteen eighty or older Chrysler. Do it. Ain't you, hard you'll enough. be glad you did. Yep. <laughs> all right, let's go over here and look at some of this documentation. Window sticker. All right, there's the original window sticker. That shows that it's 361 big block car, Vickery Motors in Mansfield, Massachusetts, with a 3372 price tag. 
Oh, you're different. You Base know. price twenty six forty nine. Right. The car was actually three sixty one eighty nine sixty. Had a higher sticker price than my sixty nine Roadrunner. It was three thousand thirty four. Really? Yeah. Wow. And then this is where the old boy made the deal and traded him in a sixty four. The original invoice. I was I was wondering about this earlier. You guys can tell us because it, it says here in dealer installed. It's it's got tinted glass tinted windshield, but yet. What's it say on the window sticker? Window sticker. I thought I'd just seen it. Undercoating. See, that's on there. They might have typed Glass that tinted in. windshield, 2160, and it's listed. Yeah, it's, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it acts like, the, it, on this, it looks like the dealer installed it, but it looks like it was ordered from the factory. It's not on listed. On the other side, yeah. Or the yeah. dealer might have ordered it that way when he, you know, and yeah. I don't know. Yeah, he, maybe this all came standard on it, and then right. maybe the dealer added, I think it even has a trailer tow package on it. That's crazy. Right. Like they had a camper or something. Right. More than likely they did. Who you know, knows, pull a little you know, pop-up or something back in the day. Yep. I, I wonder if those people are still living, you know. I mean, yeah. uh, If anybody knows these guys, uh, I would say that's Marguerite yeah. M. and Lawrence W. Murray. Sh South Main Street, Sherborne, Massachusetts. Yeah, if, they, if they are around, I'd like to let them know I got their car and take yeah. excellent care of it. Yeah, December 14, 1965. Uh, 3372. And it looks to me like they allowed them $908.45 on a 64 Plymouth sedan. Is that the way you see it? Uh, no, I see it that they allowed them 24. Yeah, that's that that's yeah, and, and had them they had to pay. That's the difference. $908 to boot to go out the door with the car. That's the difference. Yeah, that makes more sense. That's what I would say. Yeah. But interesting to get that paperwork. You don't yeah, see that neat. often on a 58-year-old car. No, and the original build sheet. Broadcast sheet. Yeah. As you can see, the zigzags are always uh, up under usually the passenger side rear seat on uh -huh. most of them I found. But I've found yeah. them in all kinds of places. Yeah, Ford puts them everywhere. You don't know. You may take a door panel off maybe behind it. Or there may be two or three uh, in I there. found one one time on a Coronet that was a broadcast sheet for a Super B. But it wasn't a Super B. It was a Cornet 440. <laughs> so, but this is in the 80s. Somebody could have right. swapped the seats out of the Super B that's into the Cornet. Yeah, that's very possible. The, well, we'll take this thing for a ride. Let's do. That's my favorite part about Mopars is riding. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like a pooch to me. It is. It's a dog. <laughs> that door closed all right. That's another Mopar thing. I believe it did. A lot of times the star needs a little... It didn't close like a Ford door, but it, it, it latched, I think. They didn't ain't got the authority, did they? <laughs> My uh, little sister actually flew out of the GTX in her little <laughs> really? plastic buddy seat. Uh, remember that gas station that was in front of Parking 8 in Hillsboro, that little gas station? <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Larry was filling up, jumped in the car. His kids were in the car. He whooped around. The mom was over ordering the hamburgers. Out the door, he wasn't used to driving that. The door flew I open? I think he had a Chevy Caprice. The door flew open out the door. My little sister went and, oh, yeah, it was a big scene in Elsborough. <laughs> <laughs> they probably didn't call children and family services back then. Mm. Nah, they were both probably drinking this day, to be yeah. honest with you. <laughs> We'll just run around here and warm her up a little bit. Uh oh. It's uh, like I said, I've got a chokeless carburetor on it. I'm not a big fan of a. Uh, they're great carburetors on a vehicle that's stone stock. Yeah. The Carters and. Uh, Edelbrock's 
Yeah. After that, I want a holly or a brawler or a quick wheel. Yeah. Like We're out in the country now, folks. We don't have to worry too much about police out here. That would have had a push button automatic over there if it wasn't in the floor, correct? 64. 64, they ended it in 64? Yeah. On a satellite. Yeah. Oh, really? Satellite come either either automatic on the floor or four speed. Huh. Or three speed. Yeah. Well, maybe it's not a pooch. <laughs> It'll run. Well, I'm glad that sun came out, but oh, it sure is awful bright beautiful now. Day. Beautiful day. And I've got the sway bar off of it, so don't mind the jumping around. It gets a little How scary. come you did, why did you take the sway bar off of it? Uh, front end lift. Weight transfer. Oh, really? Yeah. I got it next door and safe keeping, but yeah, that lets the front end come up. I got drag shocks on it as well, which, yeah, no damping going up and they set down harder, but it'll let that front end come up faster. Yeah. in it <laughs> I probably will someday <laughs> it's a good thing you keep it on the drag strip yeah, yeah. I, I enjoy driving like I said without the sway bar it's a little wild it's it's a really nice driving car yeah with uh when everything's in place but like I said I, I can still drive it to Fillmore give me a lottery ticket if I need to yeah It will set you back in the seat. Yeah. Which from a lower speed, you know, right. running better. But like I said, as you can tell, you can tell it needs transmission. I think up here will be the uh, good place to do a drive-by. Yeah, we'll get out and see her going down the road. What I'll do, what I'll be able to do, Tony, is... Uh, I might clutch you out here and I come down the road and around the corner. That'll work. And head up. Yeah. Away from you and come back, turn around, and uh, then if you want me to do a burnout, I can do a burnout and then go home. Cool, that'll work. All right. We're going to let you guys see this car in motion. I'm going to hop out and let him do his thing. <laughs> I think he's going to do a little bit of a burnout for you guys. It definitely looks good going down the road. That, uh, transmission ain't like a magic. All that shifting, funky shifting there. That wasn't me. That was transmission. That was in drive. Doing it well, you'll be, that'll be taken care of this spring. Oh, yeah. Definitely. No ifs, ands, or buts. It looks good going down the road, that's for sure. sure. 
that's what it's all about, ain't it? Looking good. Not really. It's enjoying yourself. I did get over an inch of rain before this is all done. What'd you get? I you got look? three quarters. Well, we dang sure needed it. Oh, man. We'll do a little manual thing, and when you get a chance, turn around and look behind you. It's going to be smoky here. But okay. He says we're going to get on it again. <laughs> what a fun car. <laughs> You know, unfortunately, a lot of people that's watching us right now can't do that where they live. No. It's a, <laughs> this is God's know, country out here. A lot of people, people. Uh, said, mm, unless it's deer season, nine times up then, I can load my dogs up and go down there and do what I want to do. You know, I work for most right. of these farmers. Right. It's, uh, but anyway, what I'd like to do is take you to see a real good car. <laughs> yeah, Sam wants us to go see his neighbor's car. Uh, and a it's lifetime what? friend, 69 Charger RT. A lifetime friend. Did lifetime I, friend. I didn't know him. Uh, did yeah, he, he went to Vandalia Schools for a little bit. He did? Well, I didn't go very much. He remembers you from there. I didn't go very much. What's his name? Chris Zupansi. I don't remember that name. And uh, I didn't really uh, become friends with him until high school, but he's been a long time mechanical mentor. And he's taught me a lot yeah about taking care of these old cars and yeah. stuff but he is a little bit adhd <laughs> all right guys well it. let us know what you think thanks ham for showing it to no us problem. appreciate I it. it i like showing off <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to wrap it up guys again please remember to like the video comment and subscribe and we're going to go check out what 69 Dodge Charger RT. 69 uh, Charger RT. Let's go check it out. All right. Stay tuned, guys.